One of the things I've learned over the years is to pick your battles when it comes to sanding. Every woodworking project will demand a different level of smoothing and sanding. These are big outside doors that are going to be covered up with paint. So all I'm doing here is taking some 80 grit sandpaper to just basically even out boards that aren't quite flush. There's absolutely no reason for me to take this down to a really smooth surface. So I'm going to use some more of that siding to cut the strip that goes between those two doors. By the way, thank you whoever left a comment a couple days ago telling me that that strip is called an astragal. I had no idea. I'll bet there's a lot of you right now going, yeah, of course it's called an astragal. I make astragals all the time. I, I used to work at an astragal warehouse. It always amuses me that I can go through life for 54 years and never have heard that word before. Or maybe I heard it, but I just didn't. You just didn't process. But that got me thinking of a couple of other words for everyday things that most of us probably don't know. And the first one I think of is an aglet. Aglet is that little thingy on the end of your shoelace. There was an episode of Phineas and Ferb years ago that had to do with aglets. Oh, and spandrel. Spandrel, well actually spandrel I think has several different meanings. It usually refers to something kind of triangular, like an architectural element. But one of them is that space underneath a stairway, you know, that triangular space that is usually unused unless you find out that somebody's been living in there for 30 years or something and you want to make a movie about it. The back of this siding is just exposed particle board, so I want to make sure I cover up it as well as the front with paint to protect it from the elements. I want to make a simple latch for this door. I've been kind of playing around with some different designs, but I, I think I've got a system that'll work. I'm going to use some kind of thin wood. This is a piece of oak. I like also that it's a hard wood so it can withstand a little bit of abuse. Okay, scratch that plan. That was dumb. This is what I was going to do is have this piece sitting here and then I would have to have a piece here to raise it up above that and then this would latch down like that. But it poses a couple of problems. One of them is I probably should have made this longer so that I can get a screw in there and or just put a couple of holes in here that might work. But it also, I don't know, it looks kind of clunky. So really I think my original solution on the old door is really the best one. This is sleek, it doesn't take up much room, it's just a bent piece of metal that I can put a screw in and then I'll still use this siding to level that up and then all I gotta do, and I'll use a thin strip of oak too this time and then it, it'll just drop down in like that. So I want my latch to swing around this way. So I guess it makes sense if I just kind of split the difference here. I'll level up this side and then drill a hole right through both of those. I'm securing that bolt with a lock nut. That way I could just tighten it down to whatever tension it needs. So that's pretty good for now. I'm gonna have to take that off to paint it. Now what I wanna do is screw this in place. I put one of these barrel bolts up on this door so that I can close that and lock it in place. 
if I want to, I probably don't really need to. And then this one will close up. Oh, this is definitely an improvement over the old doors and these were a lot easier to make. And they're not warped. Oh, before I go, I got something I've been meaning to show you. I got last week. It's my new Corona mask. What do you think? <laughs> if that doesn't tell people to stay away, nothing will. I'll see you guys tomorrow.